All right, <clears throat> Shalom, Shalom. Um, Kalayim la Yahweh by Hashem, Yahushua by Hashem, Rakakodash. Double honor to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone. Must peace, love, and say taste to all the brothers doing his work and truth and sincerity. Shalom. This is the brother Batak back again through the Spirit with another lesson. And um, I was just reading First Kings the tenth chapter, and I decided to look up, you know, how rich would Solomon be in this day and time, according to what Google says. Um. It comes up, you know, pretty much with the same number, two trillion, around two trillion. So in today's time, Solomon would be on the level of the international bankers. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sure, you know. How rich, you know, how much, how, how much uh, trillion dollars they have. I forget how much they're worth. Um, let me see. What is the net worth of the Rockefellers? So, let me see. That says eleven billion. And, uh, um, what about the? Uh, Oppenheimer's. Oh, it doesn't give me an official number for the Oppenheimer's. Uh, Rothschild. Let's see Rothschild. Yeah, I was thinking of um, the Rothschilds. What is their family worth? It says the Rothschild family owns 80% of the world's wealth with a net worth of $500 trillion. Damn. So, it's safe to say that the Rothschilds, the richest family in the world with an asset of more than $1 trillion. Hmm. So, uh, the official number on their net worth is it's not, let me see. Their official net worth is most likely in the trillions. But, you know, we're focusing on Solomon for this point, um, for the point of this lesson. Let's see. How rich was King Solomon? Okay, so we're going to focus on King Solomon for this, this, this particular video. And I just wanted to get a point of um, um, poverty is going to be a thing of the past once we transition into the kingdom of heaven. Because we will be wealthier than your wildest dreams. You think, you know, having status and having um, money on this side is something? No, just wait till we get to the kingdom. And we're going to be rich. We're not, we're going to be more than rich. We're going to be wealthy. Wealthy, wealth can be trans transitioned from generation to generation. We're, you're not going to see a poor person in the kingdom, of, in our kingdom, man. You know what I'm saying? And this is all, hey, this is all that comes with wisdom and knowledge of the scriptures. You know, the scripture says, seek the kingdom. Seek kingdom. Because when you seek the kingdom of heaven, all of these things are going to be added unto you. This is our first Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of Most High and his righteousness, and all things, all these things shall be added unto you. Take thereof no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So all things will be added unto you, man. You know, food, raiment, all the things that you need in your life. You know, everything will be added to us. But all we got to do is seek the heavenly father. Seek the kingdom of heaven first. And all of these things are going to be added to us, man. We're going to be wealthy. Because <clears throat> the scripture says it. Um, this is uh, Psalms 112 and 3. It says, wealth and riches shall be in his house. 
and his righteousness endured forever. Whose house? The Lord's house. You know, we're going to be a wealthy nation. We're going to be rich. Proverbs 13 and 22 says, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. And that's why, like the scripture says, a, like, like we know in history, all of the wealth is just translated. The kingdom is translated, and all the wealth and all the money and all the gold, all that is translated from one person to another, from one kingdom to another. You know, and those same riches, that same wealth that the elites got is going to be translated to us. All the gold that they have locked up in Fort Knox and all these other places that they keep their stashes of gold, all of that's going to be translated to us, the nation of Israel. Ecclesiastes 5 and 19, it says, Every man also to whom the Most High hath given riches and wealth, and hath given him power to eat thereof, and to take his portion, and to rejoice in his labor, this is the gift of the Most High. And we're going to have that. We're going to have that in the kingdom. Why? Because we're attending to the word of Yahweh Bashem al Joshua 1 and 8. It says, This book of the law shall not depart of thy, out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou madest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shall thou make thy way prosperous, and then I shall have then thou shalt have good success. So if you want success, selling your soul is not how you become successful. Attending to the laws and the statutes and commandments of the Bible and following after the faith in, in Hamashiach Kawasha is how you attend good success. Verse 9 Have have not I commanded thee be, be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For Yahweh, thy power is with thee, wheresoever thou goest. And I was just, you know, thinking about how how wealthy King Solomon was. You know what I'm saying? The scripture says that he was the wealthiest man of his time. Let me get that real quick. Scripture to back that up real quick. I got to find it in my Bible because I got to highlight it. Because I just marked it down. You know, it's our first Kings chapter 10. Let's see, First Kings chapter ten. And, you know, a lot of reasons why Jeff, Jake suffered today is because of poverty, and poverty will be taken away from us, man. Best believe that shit. We ain't gonna worry about being poor anymore, man. Uh, this is our uh, First Kings chapter ten, hmm. verse twenty-three. It says, so King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which the Most High, Most High had put in his heart. And they brought every man his presents, vessels of silver and vessels of gold and garments and armor and spices, horses and mules at, at, at rate year by year. So every year, they was bringing all of these things, man. They was bringing certain portions of these things every year. You know what I'm saying? It's like how the import, the imports always bring this up. The import and the exports of uh, America, how there's always, you know, stuff coming in, stuff leaving. But in this case, it was just stuff coming in. It was just stuff coming in. At a rate, year by year, to King Solomon. And so, the same thing that happened back then is going to happen again. This time, King Solomon is going to be ruling forever. And he's never going to stop ruling. And there's never going to be, and there's never going to be any war anymore. So there's going to be always peace. And if there's any altercations or anything that pops up through the spirit, you know, we're going to lay it down. But as far as like world wars, those things are not happening anymore, man. We're going to be executing the laws, statutes, and commandments in the earth. And all the heathen that obey, they're going to be blessed. And all the ones that don't, they're going to be cursed. And that's what the scripture says. Let's go get it real quick. You know, because these curses are transitioning to you heathens. Y'all y'all have took advantage of us when we were suffering. This is uh, Deuteronomy 30 and 7. It says, and, and Yahweh, thy power will put all these curses upon thine enemies. On them that hate thee 
which persecuted thee. It's lucky. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of Yahweh and do all his commandments which I command thee this day. And that's what's going to happen. Oh, let me read verse 9. It says, And Yahweh thy power will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand. In the fruit of thy body, that means offspring. The Lord going to make us plenteous. What it says in um, um, Isaiah, the, the Lord will hasten it in his time. The Lord is going to make things. We're going to be doing multiplication, man. <laughs> I mean, let's look at it, man. We got a hundred wives, right? And you get all of those women impregnated. That's a hundred children, man. And that's just a small number. It might be way more. You might have way more women than that. You might have a thousand women. 2,000 women. You know what I'm saying? Um, so much and so on. Keep going, man. Because the scripture says the Lord is going to give us whatever our hearts desire, man. You know? So who knows, man? We're going to be doing multiplication in the, in the kingdom. Not no adding no one plus one. Got to have one baby. Then wait nine months to have another one. Hell no, nah, man. It's gonna work. It ain't going to work now. It ain't going to work out like that. Because we have to bring the whole nation of Israel back, man. The whole nation. Which is in the millions. Most likely probably in the billions, man. It's a lot of jakes. It's a lot of jakes, man. You know, the scripture says what? We are as the sand of the sea. So we're going to be popping them out. And the women ain't going to have to worry about birth pains anymore. I did a little survey. I had asked my rib. I was like, I basically asked her, okay, if you had, if you ain't had no birth pains, how many kids would you have? She, she made it very clear to me. That if she ain't had no birth pains, he ain't mind. She wouldn't mind, you know, popping out kids, man. And that's what's going to be happening in the kingdom. It's like women not going to have to worry about birth pains anymore. That's going to be taken away. So them babies going to be flowing, man. Deuteronomy 39 again, it says, And Yahweh thy power shall make thee plenteous. Like she will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle. And in the fruit of thy land for good. For Yahweh will again rejoice over thee for good as he has rejoiced over thy fathers. So everything that everything that we possess, everything that we have, the cattle, you know, the fruits, the food, you know what I'm saying, the, the children, everything is gonna be given to us in plenteous, man. We're gonna be overflowing with blessings. Like, um, let me see how. Uh, We're going to be flowing with blessings. Man. I had thought of a scripture. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 30. Because this is the future prophecy, man. Deuteronomy 30 and um, verse 10, it says, If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of, thy, of Yahweh, thy power, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn again, Turn unto Yahweh thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul for this commandment which I command thee this day. I have not hidden, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it afar off. Okay, wolf. So lucky, bear with me while I find some precepts. Length of days in the Oh, this is uh Proverbs three, and um thirteen. It says, "Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding." So when King Solomon first got the chair, you know the power seat, so to speak, he wanted wisdom. It says, "For the merchant merch, merchandise 
of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than, than fine gold. So when Wisdom is the principal thing. Let's see. This is first Kings chapter four, verse 29. It says, and the most high gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and, and large largeness of his and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore and Solomon's wisdom exceed excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East country and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men than, than Ethan the Israelite and he meant the Chocolate, Chacal, and Dar Darda, the sons of Mahal, and his fame was in all nations round about. And he spake three thousand proverbs, and his songs were a thousand and five. And he spake of trees from the cedar, cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. He spaketh also of beasts and of fowl and of creeping things and of fishes. And there, and there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon, for all kings of the earth, from all kings of the earth, which had heard of his wisdom. So that's why the scripture says wisdom is the principal thing. <clears throat> or is it I'm just I might be quoting the wrong scripture but um wisdom is the principal thing you know what let's go back to I was in Proverbs 3 I believe so like I kind of got off track Proverbs 3 it's Proverbs 3 and uh, 13 it says happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding that's why we are attending to the word of Yahweh Shmuel Shah. We are attending to the Lord's wisdom, for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. So, riches, wisdom, is more precious than fine gold and silver. She is she is more precious than rubies, and all things that things thou canest desire are not to be compared to her. Length of days is in her right hand, and if and in her left hand, riches and honor. So if you get the wisdom of the Lord by default, man, you're going to get these things. You're going to obtain these things. That's why we're we rather choose to be, you know, indulging into the wisdom of the Lord than than in anything else. Because all of, all of these people chase after riches, they chasing riches, but they need to be chasing wisdom because wisdom will gift you riches. Wisdom is more precious than, um, than riches, you know? Wisdom and knowledge of the scriptures. Verse 17, it says, Her ways are ways of plenty, pleasant, pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. She is talking about Sophia. That's the woman that we need to be chasing, you know? Verse 19, Yahweh by wisdom hath founded the earth, by understanding hath he established the, the heavens. By his knowledge and the depths are broken. By his knowledge the depths are were well broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul, and grace unto thy neck. Then thou shalt walk in the way, walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid 
Yeah, thou shalt lie down and thy sleep shall be sweet. So, um, it's very plain and simple to the man, you know, to the men that understand how important wisdom is. And I just want to get a couple of precepts concerning this matter. Ecclesiastes 9 and 16. It says, Then said I, Wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. So, the men of the Lord, the men that preach the word, are considered the poor man. We're, look, man, we're all poor. We're, we're fighting for that penny, man, to be, um, you know, um, put in a better state. Because right now, we're not in a good case. You know, we're at the bottom. The majority of the time, you know, we're suffering because of poverty. You know, in, in this society, we're subject to payments. But the Lord is going to change everything around when he comes. You know, Jake is not going to be poor, man. We're not going to be poor anymore. Because we're going to have the wisdom. And wisdom what? Get it a kingdom. Wisdom get it riches. Wisdom get it. You look at all the stuff that was given to King Solomon because of his wisdom, man. You know, they was bringing gifts year by year, man. Think about that. The same thing is going to happen to us, us men that are preaching the word and hoping to be saved. Put it like that. Not the clan. The scripture says, I shall make that not make thyself a part of that number. We're just hoping that we are a part of that number, the hopeful elect, you know, because we're not going to be poor anymore. We're, we're going to be rich. That said the Bible. But like the scripture says, the poor man's words are not heard. Wisdom, I'm gonna select, I'm gonna jump. Ecclesiastes 9 and 18 says, Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. Isaiah 33 and 6 And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. So, wisdom is. One of the key things of this faith, man. And the Lord is constantly increasing our wisdom. Daniel 5 and 11, it says, There is a man in thy kingdom in whom the, is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the day of thy father, light and understanding, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king of I, I say, thy father made master of the magicians, and astronomers, Chaldees, and soothsayers. For as much as an ex excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams, and of showing of hard sentences, and dissolving of doubts, even found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar, Belteshazzar, now let Daniel be called, and he will shoot the interpretation. So Daniel was a great man, a man of wisdom. And look what happened to him. The king put him high in his kingdom, man. All because of his wisdom and how he interpreted the dreams. I'm trying to find the the part where he made he made Daniel he made that basically made Daniel captain this is um Daniel 5 and 29 it says then commanded Bel Belshazzar and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. And the night, and that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain, and Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about four three score and two years old. So as you can see, Daniel was was um, highly favored in the kingdom of Babylon 
because of his interpretation. Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar put him high up in his kingdom because of, you know, the visions and the things that he was able to do, interpret. He made him the third ruler in the kingdom. Man. <laughs> so that right there shows you what wisdom and knowledge of the scriptures, you know, can get you. You know, it can get you highly favored. And um, it brings to, you know, brings you to a position of power, a position, uh, a position of dominance. So that's just um, one of two many examples of how wisdom can elevate you. Wisdom can put you in a position that you can never you can work so hard and you can never get to the position where wisdom could put you. OK, let's go. Let's keep going. Let's find a few more precepts concerning wisdom. Let's go to the book of Sirach. I know some good ones in Sirach. It's a lot of scriptures speaking on wisdom. man. And Lord willing, man, this lesson is edifying to you, brothers, man. You know, just focusing on wisdom and how it can make you the richest man on the, and the wealthiest person on the earth, man. <laughs> and that's what we're gonna we're gonna be able to experience that. We're gonna know what wealth is, man. We're gonna know what that is. We can't we see it in this world, but it's it's it's, it's gonna be on a whole nother level. Okay, um, Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 20 says, Therefore, the desire of, a, of wisdom bring it to a kingdom. And that's what we desire. We desire the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures. Because that is going to give us all things. We ain't got to go out and work for riches, man. If we if we pertain not in, you know, to the wisdom of the Lord, all of these things are going to be freely given to us. Let me see. Um... Wisdom of Solomon 8 and 5, it says, If riches be a possession to be desired in this life, what is richer than wisdom that worketh all things? That's a good question. <laughs> Nothing is richer than wisdom. Because like I said, Linky White, like the scriptures keep reiterating, wisdom can give you all things. And wisdom is ultimately going to lead us to immortality. Bear with me. Rock one and five. You know what? I'm gonna start at one. <laughs> start, so like I'm gonna start at verse three. <clears throat> it says, uh, "Who can number, who can number the sins of the sea and the drops of rain and the days of eternity?" Who can find out the height of heaven and the breadth of the earth, the breadth of the earth and the deep and what and and the deep and wisdom. Wisdom hath created, has been created before all things, and the understanding of the prudence from everlasting. The word of the God most high is the fountain of wisdom, and her ways are everlasting commandments. That's a good precept. 
to whom hath the root of wisdom been revealed or whom have known her wise counsels he says been revealed unto who the nation of israel you know because these heathens they don't follow after the, the they don't follow after the wisdom you know they have wisdom of the world but they don't have wisdom out of knowledge and understanding of the scriptures that's what makes them on a lower level than us we're on a higher level because we have the bible we have the scriptures we understand the scriptures Verse um, 7, it says, Unto whom hath the knowledge of wisdom been made manifest, and who hath understood her great experience? To the nation of Israel. The Lord gave his precious, precious word, his precious wisdom, you know, and knowledge and understanding to, to us. So we can carry out judgment and we can carry out these things in the earth. We supposed to be the ones that push wisdom in the earth. Verse 8 says, There is one wise and greatly to be feared, the Lord sitting, sitting upon his throne. He created her and saw her and hum numbered her and poured her out upon all his works. Right, it takes wisdom to do the things that the Lord did and, how, and create the things that the Lord created. Because, huh? I mean, everything that the Lord created has a purpose and Esau believes that every, the Lord made a mistake. But really, the works of Yahweh is perfect because he did it in wisdom. Verse 10. She is with all flesh according to his gift. And he that giveth her that hath given. And he hath given her to them that love him. The fear of the Lord is honor and glory and gladness and a crown of rejoicing. The fear of the Lord maketh a merry heart and great. It giveth joy and gladness and a long life. So the fear of the Lord it wisdom is goes hand in hand man. i'm gonna jump down to verse 21 it says you know what hold on verse 16 it says to fear the lord is fullness of wisdom and filleth men with her fruits and what are the fruits of of wisdom riches you know immortality you know peace all of these are the fruits of of wisdom a kingdom also because the scripture says what a desire of wisdom bring it to a kingdom verse 17 she filleth all their house with things desirable and the garners with her increase because look what happened with solomon man look at all the increase that he had all because he would desire wisdom first and foremost he wasn't chasing after riches because he understood that through wisdom he was be able to obtain anything and everything so once the we the Lord, wisdom is gonna fill our house with all desirable things, all the all her increase. These are the it's, you will see the fruits of wisdom. It says the fear of the Lord is a crown of wisdom, making peace and perfect health to flourish, and that's what's gonna be happening in the kingdom of heaven. Peace and perfect health are gonna flourish because we're not gonna hide anything, man. The knowledge of the elements, the knowledge of different fruits and things that heal the body, it's gonna be known. Everybody's going to know. We're not going to be like Esau making money off people being sick. And that's, that's that's unrighteousness, man. You know, because the Lord created certain herbs out of earth and wisdom will guide you to use different herbs. Willigent, wi wisdom and knowledge of the scriptures. The scriptures tell you everything that you need to know. It says both which are the gifts of the most high and it enlargeth their rejoicing that their rejoicing that love him. Wisdom ran it, ran it down skill and knowledge of understanding, standing and exalting them to honor that hold her fast. So wisdom ran it down skill and knowledge of understanding, standing and exalting them for honor that hold her fast. You know how people, certain people are able to do it, certain things, certain skills. And they know certain knowledge of different elements is because of the, because of the spirit that the Lord, the spirit of wisdom the Lord had put in certain people, man. You know. Verse twenty, it says, "The root of wisdom is to fear the Lord, and the branches thereof are long life. The fear of the Lord driveth away sins, and where it is present, it driveth away wrath. That's why it would give us long life." Because if the fear of the Lord driveth away sins, or well, the fear of the Lord, the root of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, then it would drive away us from sinning. 
And ultimately, through the spirit, we're going to be made perfect in the kingdom of heaven. So we're not we're going to have a very, very long life and everlasting life. Verse 22, a fierce man cannot be justified for it. Was, well, let me see. And it's where the scripture. I'm going to jump down to verse 27, 6. It says, if thou desires wisdom, keep the commandments and the Lord shall give her unto thee. For the fear of the Lord is wisdom and instruction and faith and meekness are her delight. Distrust not the fear of the Lord when thou art poor and come not upon him with a double heart. So, if thou desires wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto him. For the fear of the Lord is wisdom, and instruction, and faith, and meekness are her delight. So, um, as you can see, man, this 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 lesson is all about wisdom, and how what are the fruits of wisdom, and just giving you an insight on what wisdom can do for you, man. Wisdom can make you the wealthiest man on the earth. But see the difference between us and the elite. We uh we are we are obtaining wisdom. We're obtaining riches through the spirit and power and wisdom of Yahweh Bashim Al Shah and fear in the Lord. That's like the scripture says, what store our treasures in heaven? That's what we're doing through the spirit. We're making spiritual investments. And it's gonna pay off in the end of the day. And it, we're working. Right now we're working. You know, for them, for that, for that uh, kingdom, for the power, for the glory. We're working for these things, man, to be wealthy. Because, hey, who wants to be poor? <laughs> nobody don't like, nobody likes poverty, man. But because we sin, the Lord put us in a low condition. But we're going to be put on high. We're going to be put on high, very high above everybody if you're a part of the nation of israel man you're going to be wealthy rich ain't even a word wealthy is the word man so the accumulated wealth of solomon today would be two trillion man that's a lot of fucking money that's a lot of wealth that's a lot of wealth so just think about that man we're, we, we're not greedy for gain. That's what's wrong with Esau. He's greedy for gain. He had to rob and steal for all his riches. Oh, you know what? Let's go. I'm about to close out with something real quick. The riches that he had, he says, he vomit, swallowed, swallowed down. He said, vomit them up. Yeah, let's go to the book of uh, Job. Lord willing, I hope this lesson is edifying, man. Just trying to get these precepts and Lord but willing, you know, brothers understand. And, you know, this lesson built somebody up through the spirit and had them look another look take another look at the fruits of wisdom oh that's what the title of this lesson through the spirit fruits of wisdom um this is job chapter 20 um I'll start at verse uh 15 it says he has swallowed down riches and he shall vomit them up again the most high shall cast him out of his belly this is speaking about the wicked esau has swallowed down a lot of riches a lot of gold and Fort Knox and, you know, different places. He has swallowed these riches down, but guess what? He's going to vomit them up. It says he shall suck the poison of asp. The viper's tongue shall slay him. He shall not see the rivers, the floods, the brooks of honey and butter. So because they're not going to be in the, the, the state you're in right now, Esau. You 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 see the best of the best. You know what I'm saying? You you're wealth, you rich, you're wealthy. You can do whatever you want. You have the best food. You have the best resources. You have everything. And you all of those things are going to be taken from you. It says that which he had labored for shall he restore and shall not swallow it down. According to his substance shall the restitution be and he shall not rejoice therein because he's going to have to pay back restitution. You got to pay us back. man. You give us all the riches. Give all of that. We, we taking all of that shit, man. You know, like the scripture says. The Lord shall make thee bear. The Lord's going to strip you out of everything. He's taking everything. Because he hath oppressed and hath forsaken the poor. Because he hath violently taken away an house which he built not. Surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. He shall not save of that which he desired. There shall none of his meat be left. Therefore shall no man look for his goods. Everything is going to be taken from this devil. 
You know, the merchandise of America, everything is going to be taken away. It's going to be stripped away forcefully, man. You're not going to be able to sell shoes anymore. You're not going to be able to sell cars and all of these merchandise. All of these things are going to be put to an end. And you're damn sure not going to be able to make money off wars anymore. Because that's going to be put to an end. Verse 21, it says, in the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. That means you're going to be in a terrible case. You're going to be in, you're going to be down bad. Every one hand of the wicked shall come upon him. When he is about to fill his belly, the Most High shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he's eating. So right when this devil think he's going to accomplish his NWO, the Lord is going to rain fire upon this devil. He's going to cast him down and he's got to pay us back, man. All of the shit that he stole and took, all the you know, all of the precious things that he took out of our temple, you know, sacrificing swine flesh, everything's gonna have to he's gonna have to pay for everything, man. All the precious things that you took from us, you're gonna restore every single last bit of it, man. So with that, man. With that, Lord willing you brothers edify this lesson, man. Just a few words on the fruits of, of riches. And I, man, when I seen, I seen the net worth, when I seen the net worth of King Solomon, man, it just made me, you know, it boosted my faith, you know, and, and, um, having wisdom, this makes you want wisdom, man. If wisdom can get me two trillion, man, we're going to see the fruits of your, of the wisdom of Yahweh Bashem al shot, man. And it's going to pay off. Because, like, you know, we tired of being poor, man. We have no power being poor. You know? We can't stop ourselves from, you know, uh, suffering from the wrath of Esau. Why? Because we're poor. We have, we're suffering from poverty, man. You know, the bank can take your crib. You can't even pay you. You got to pay this. You got to pay that. We ain't got to worry about stuff like that in the kingdom, though. Um... Second, um, this is uh, Second Corinthians eight and nine. It says, "For we, for ye know the grace of our Lord Yahweh Shahmashiach, that through, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich." So, Yahweh Shahmashiach did a very great thing, man. He paid the price, man. So we could be free. So we could be uh so we could be in a better case. Revelations two and nine. It says, I know thy works and thy tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. It says, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are synagogue of Satan. So Yahweh made a great sacrifice for us. Sirach 11 and 12 says, Again, there is another that is slow and hath need of help, wanting ability and full of poverty. Yet the eye of the Lord looketh upon him for good and set him up from his low estate. And that's what the Lord is going to do. Sirach 11 and 14, he, he's Lord's going to make us prosperous. Prosperity and adversity, life and death, poverty and riches come, come of the Lord. So that's what's going to happen. We're going to be taken out of poverty and put in a position of power and riches and wealth. Riches are good unto him that hath no sin, and poverty be is evil in the mouth of the ungodly. That's why you have the hungry people, they always want money. They don't they can't suffer poverty. That's why they that's why Jake sell their soul, because poverty in their mouth is evil, man. Sirach, Sirach 18 and 24 It says when thou hast enough Remember the time of hunger And when thou art rich 
think upon poverty and need because this keeps you at a low this this is what happened with jakes when they go from poverty to riches they they always think about the bottom you know what i'm saying they think about that that's that's something we got to do you know when thou has enough remember the hunger and when thou art rich think upon poverty and need because that keeps you humble that's the most important thing it keeps you humble so because you remember your comings you 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 remember what you came from and a lot of dudes you know in in this day and time they be like man i remember where i came from and they have a sense of humbleness about them they're not proud you know what i'm saying that keeps you humble that's the most important thing because all of these things come from the lord poverty and riches come from the lord so you got to remain humble once you do get in that position and when we get in that position we're gonna be we're gonna be you know humble we're gonna be uh graceful you know thankful to the lord because it's a beautiful thing that he took us out of that condition and put us in a better place. So Rock 29 and 9, it says, help the poor for the commandment's sake and turn him not away because of his poverty. So it was a like it was a well-known thing in that time to. Um, in the uh, time of the scriptures to leave a 10 percent a tot basically a 10 percent for the poor and the poverty man because that's something that you know is accustomed to us we do that you know so that was a thing that you know we did according to the what the scripture has said leaving you know 10 percent of the fruit and stuff like that for the poor and for the weak and need and poor and needy because one thing that esau does not do he does not support the poor and the needy he does not give to the poor and needy the elites got enough money in this motherfucking world to make sure every family in the world is straight but yet poverty is their weapon you know what i'm saying they're a bunch of you know they devils man they're not gonna do right you know they got every they got the power to make everybody rich or at least wealthy. They got the power to give everybody on this earth a million dollars and everybody be good. But you think these devils gonna fucking do that? These devils are greedy for gain. And the scripture says they, they, they can't be satisfied. You know? So. So. With that, man, Lord willing, you brothers edified through the spirit and power. Yahweh by Shemel Shah. I'm going to close out by giving all praise and glory to Yahweh by Shemel Shah. By Shemel Kakwadash. Double honor to the apostles, to the elders of great millstone. Much peace, love, and salutation to the brothers doing his work and truth to sincerity, man. Shalom. To the elect. Hey, this is the fruit of righteousness. Shalom. Fruit of wisdom. Sorry. And righteousness.